Okay, so the next thing that happens in the master app is I create a new window. And this is the main goal of this tutorial here is to show you guys how to create a new window. So right here we have our function create new window. And in here I've added e colon event equals null. And the reason I did that was because later on you might want to make this if I push this button, then it's going to open something else. It's going to create a new but a new window if I push a button or if I mouse over this or if I do something. So what I did here is I just set it up so that if I ever set up an event, this will automatically react to it. Um, and this equals null. Well, I don't have any events going on right now. I'm just you know calling this as it is, just bare bones. So it would normally throw an error, but when I put equals null, even though I pass nothing in here this sets it to null so it doesn't throw an error it's just basically a default value for that event if I don't send anything to it just in case uh, the same idea is very useful when you're passing strings you can set your null string or if you're passing paths for URLs things like that uh, again I'm not gonna pass anything back so it's gonna be colon void and um, what you have to create is you have to create a set of new window initialization options and um, I've called them new options here, and it's native window init ops. And um, new native window init options. And um, I go in here and I set the type for my new options to be native window type dot lightweight. This is the type of window that I'm going to be opening. This is an actual system window type. Lightweight doesn't have any Chrome on it, it doesn't have any menu options, it's very light, it uses very little system resources. Um, so it's like one of the most optimum things to call if you're doing custom Chrome apps. And then again down here, my new options, the system Chrome is going to be native window system Chrome dot none. So uh, that's pretty self-explanatory, no system Chrome, it's just going to rely on what I've done to it. And then I go here, new options dot transparent equals true. That means my stage is going to be transparent. Uh, so what this does here is it just sets all of the options for that window. It's going to be a lightweight window with no Chrome, and it's going to be transparent. Now, the next thing that I do is I create my native window. So variable new native window, which is a native window, is going to be equal to a new native window with the native window initialization options of new options, these things that we just set right here. So here, we go down here and I'm going to start setting the rest of the options for the native window. The stage that stage width is going to be equal to my current stage width. I can actually change this to be whatever I want. I'm going to change this to be... and then we're going to go here, the stage that stage align is going to be stage align dot top left and the reason that I did that is because if I decide to resize this sometime with a maximize or a little drag icon so that you can resize the window yourself, what this is going to do is it's going to keep everything up in the top left hand side. That way I can resize it as I want, not scaling it like uh, uh, the Flash applications normally do. It's going to let me use my, my 9 slice scaling to keep all of my Chrome and everything like that looking nice and clean so it doesn't get too fat, too wide. It doesn't distort itself at all. And then I'm also going to set my scale mode to no scale. Same thing that I just explained with this. Um, it's going to prevent me from having an ugly looking application when it's resized. Then I'm going to go back here and I'm going to do Chrome setup new native window. So the very same thing that we did here with the master window which was stage dot native window um, is now going to be this new native window. I'm going to set up all of the Chrome in the new native window, which is going to go through here again. It's going to add the top Chrome, set the height of it and the name of it, and add it to the stage. It's going to set all of the things that I need for my close button, the location, along with the click and the mouse rollovers and rollouts, and the name, and then add it to the stage, and also the app body, and put that underneath everything. And then it's going to come back up here, and it's going to hit native window, new native window dot activate. What that does is that actually opens the window. So that's it. And um, to show you the button actions here, my function button actions e colon event, that's because it's a button press or a button rollover event. And um, I'm going to set the variable button to be equal to e.target. e.target is the current button that's pressed. And I did this, that way I don't have to type out e.target everywhere. It saves me a little bit of space and it makes things a little bit easier to read. Uh, when I'm trying to understand this. 
So I'm going to set up my switch statement. And what I'm going to test for in all of my cases is going to be button.name.2 lowercase. I almost always do 2 lowercase in case I come back to a program and I edit it next year or a couple months later and I don't remember the type of naming scheme I was doing or say somebody else wants to edit my program. If I always do these in lowercase, it doesn't matter how they type. If they have a couple of capitals in there, like you notice that when I type top chrome, I usually have it top with a capital C. That way it's easier to see the two different words. But in this case, I do two lowercase. No matter how they type, it's always going to be able to read it. So when you have top chrome, I'm going to go here and I'm going to do button.parent. What this is going to do is it's going to get the stage. Okay, So this is basically saying whatever window I'm in, it's going to get that stage and then the native window of that stage. And it's going to start move, which is going to start dragging it around. Um, and then it's going to break the case. The next case is going to be the close button. I'm going to get button.parent again, which is the stage of whatever window I'm in, and then I'm going to get the native window of that and close it, and then I'm going to break that case. It's very simple, just two options, but this is why the naming was very important. I had to name those objects, the top Chrome object and the close button object, so that I could call them here in this switch statement with button.name. Um, and then down here, I just have two small functions for what happens when you go on the rollover. I only had to type it once, so there's really no reason for me to, to shorten this up here. E.target.alpha equals 0.7, which is 70%. And then for the button rollout, E.target.alpha equals 1, which is 100%. And then stop function. So that's the end of the action script. And if I do a real quick test, here is what I have created. This is my basic window. I didn't tweak any of the Air app settings, so it just brought up a, a native thing. I'm on a Windows system, so you can see it created this. Um, and this is just a real basic window here. Uh, so I can close that, and it's left the window that I have created open. This is that secondary window that we created up here in the, the code. And it's added the top Chrome right here, the app body right here, and my close button, which you see as I roll over it, it's done all of that functionality on that. And when I close it, that closes just like the other one. When I export it out again here, you can see um, in my main window, I've also added the top Chrome here. I've added the, uh, the app body along with the close button. And like I said, it's just a very simple duplicate. You can see how it works. This one also works with the red X or the system X because... Um, those air app functions of close, maximize, minimize that I showed you in the first uh, custom Chrome tutorial, they all access your native system actions. And that's it. You have it right here, how to open a uh, new native window on a system. And uh, this shows you how to do it with the most lightweight version for system resources and uh, custom Chrome and also how to close that window and how to drag it around on the desktop. Pretty easy, pretty important. I hope you guys have fun opening new windows.